Hello again and welcome back to the Midwest Model 916 SC16 Restoration Part 3 and again a little bit disjointed this is pieces of clips that I recorded over several weeks that I'm putting trying to put in some kind of order that makes sense so with that being said thank you for stopping by and let's get on with the video Oh boy, the more I look at this set, the more discouraged I get. When I initially got this, I was looking forward to doing a 100% restoration on this thing, just make it as pristine as I could. But as I'm, I was looking at it early on, I'm looking at these two screws here, and I go, those don't look right. They don't fit the overall look of this set. You know, these are tiny little Phillips head screws in here. Why is these two ugly flathead screws or panhead screws in here? And I looked at the back, and they're sheet metal screws, where these are all nuts and bolts. These two are sheet metal screws. And I took a close look at the picture that I found today on the Internet, and sure enough, those don't belong in there. Maybe the plastic was warped and pulled away from the panel a little bit. That's just not the way to fix something. It's just... Uh, it's like a kick in the teeth. So, uh, nothing much you can do about that at this point. Do I want to spend $100 for another radio? and <laughs> steal parts off it? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to have to, you know, do a decent job on the cabinet. And I'm not even going to worry about these spots where the copper has been uh, corroded because it, this isn't really worth a an extensive restoration unless I obtain a brand new one of these front panels somewhere at a reasonable price. Anyway, Moving on, we're going to check some voltages. And I know somebody's going to say to me, well, just remove this, you know, fill the holes and paint something very close. I, you know, I could fairly easily, well, I don't know, those are sunk in. I could easily redo the gold on here. Those are raised. Those aren't. I'm sure something could be done. The problem being whatever paint you put on here these have to match all of these pieces around here have to match and over here these windows plastic film whatever this is they're glued to the back and there's like a tape holding them in I don't know what holds these plastic pieces in. they're very firmly attached whether it's tabs or whether these are glued in the odds of being able to remove that film and these pieces without breaking something, the odds are against me. This is going to eat at me. It's just going to eat at me for as long as I own this radio. Uh, just, I don't know, even know what's behind it. It's probably, yeah, I can see it's dented the plastic in, so... Why would why would someone do this? It just that's stupid. It is so stupid. Yeah, there's a mess back there. It, it, that, that would just be a horror show. I would have to repaint the whole bezel and redo. You know, like I say, this this is easy. These are raised. I have a method to put the gold paint back on there very simply. But these are not raised. These are in. And there's lettering down here also that needs to be refilled with gold paint. I'm going to sleep on it, but I don't think, I, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to try to remove all of this stuff because I'll end up breaking something and that'll be the end of it. Okay, we're making slow progress. This is a six-section tuning capacitor, and every time I tuned it, uh, especially on FM. It was just scratchy and the volume was erratic. So I took my silver conducting grease, you can buy that online, 
and you've got these little brass or I, I'm assuming they're brass I don't think they're copper wipers that run on the rotating shaft that connect that to the ground side very common for those to go and especially on the one that's in this set it's a steel shaft with what I believe is CAD plating that's turned powdery sprayed it down with deoxid and contact cleaner multiple times and then I put a little bit of silver conducting grease on each one of those little there's one two three four five six contacts in here clean you know when I got them as clean as I could a little conducting grease oh and some in the ball bearing the ball bearing also help can be a noisy item and uh, it's quieted it right down whoops now we're back to that old bugaboo of Loctal sockets. Check this out. What is very very common on these let me shut this off and I'll show you what the problem with this one is you see this all the time with these Loctal sockets I'll try to get in a little bit closer here drop the camera down and hopefully uh, we'll be able to show you what the problem with this socket is this is extremely common with these Loctal sockets let me see if I can get some more light in here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this contact right here is extremely corroded. And I don't know why these do that, even if they're not subjected to a lot of moisture. It doesn't take much in humidity to make those contacts corrode and they get intermittent this is a common common problem with uh, loctal sockets they're, they're just horrible to deal with now I have found down in the audio chain on the inverter and the last audio preamp or the last audio voltage amp before it goes into the two power tubes power amplifier tubes there's some unused pins on those sockets so I am going to attempt to extract any good ones I find and we'll have to go into this set take all the connections off of the pin that's bad slip a new socket connector you know a new socket for that pin on the tube in there and hope that we can cure this so that's where I'm going to move on to next I haven't done an alignment yet. I don't have good information. We can make some educated guesses, but I'd rather wait for my SAMs to get here. Oh, and I found out exactly what model this is. This is the SC16, manufactured in 1949. And in 1949, this sold for $239 which is roughly three thousand and sixty three dollars today actually almost sixty four three thousand and sixty four dollars today is what this would set you back in nineteen thirty nine dollars two hundred and thirty nine bucks that was a lot of money in forty nine uh, I actually found the sales brochure for this online and I've got it on order so I can take a close look at the pictures so that I can attempt to recreate the box that carries the turntable. That's where we're at. Okay, I found a simple solution for the corroded tube socket pins. I was going through my junk box and I was going to cut open another uh, octal socket I had. I was going to use a Dremel to cut the rivets and I found this guy in my... Uh, let's see if I can bring him into focus here. I found this guy in my Dremel kit and it's some kind of either carbide or diamond burr. Very small tip on the thing. 
and this fits conveniently right down into where the pin of the tube would go and I just used it by hand and gave it a little back and forth and polished up the interior of the contact portion of the uh, pin so pin, tube pin socket. Fix the problem. A little bit of uh, very light oil on there to keep them from corroding again and the tube sockets are back in service. Next I was going to do I was going to come back and do an alignment with you guys. This is one of the IF cans. Top portion here is your AM. That's tuned with a trimmer capacitor. The bottom part is the FM and that's permeability tuned. The slug is accessible from the bottom. However, not a single one of these will move and I turned them to the point where I twisted the end out of one of these and I said if I go with a regular screwdriver I'm going to destroy these. <clears throat> so I'm going to try warming one up with a heat gun and see where it gets me. A word of warning when you're tuning, and I've said this before but I think it bears repeating, these capacitors that are accessible through the top of your can I've tested these, these are cold. About 30% of the sets I work on, these are hot. These are live at B+. So there's a shock hazard, but the bigger hazard is your anode supply for your IF amp and your converter run right through that coil. And if the top part of this capacitor happens to be the part it's hot and you short that screw to ground you can blow your IF transformer burn it right out so you've got to be real careful unless you know for sure that the screws are cold make sure you use an insulated alignment tool when you're aligning these IF transformers you'll heal the coil and the transformer won't that's a joke but it's true you might get bit and nine times out of ten it's not going to kill you but short these screws to ground on a set where these screws are hot or live and you've got a 50 50 chance of blowing out one of your if transformer coils all right let me get my heat gun this may be a no-go i warmed this thing up until it was very toasty melted all the wax on the outside and it got to the point I didn't dare put any more heat to it and that slug will not move. I try a little isopropyl down the center of it I suppose but uh, if that doesn't do the trick I'm probably just going to say no. Uh, the set does play on FM it isn't a real strong performer, but wiping out one of these IF transformers would just be, I'd have to go outside and shoot myself. It is just, you know, and you've seen Dave Tipton come across this on some of his sets as well. Sometimes you just have to take a step back and say, it's not worth destroying the set just to get a little bit of extra extra performance out of the IF chain. These have been moved previously. It's very obvious. You probably can't see it, but very clearly there's wax or something along this part of the thread and then there's about a quarter of an inch exposed of clean thread on this uh, slug. So that one's been backed out at least a quarter of an inch at some point. When and by whom is unknown. The others it's hard to tell because they're recessed down in like this one is, but that one has definitely been backed out at some point. And that's the one I just tried warming up to move and it won't move. None of these will move. I did try this other slug while I had the heat gun and it just, it's, 
I think I'm going to have to call it a day on that part of the alignment. All right, I sat here and pondered this for a while. And knowing that there is another chassis available, although it's at a ridiculous price, I said maybe I'll go ahead and take a chance because I'm 99% sure the ratio detector on this thing is out of alignment just from the distortion on FM. And the more I looked at this, there's what appears to be some kind of a rubber insert in here and in here on all of these that appears to be there to keep the slug from moving after it's been adjusted. So I began to wonder if perhaps that was the problem, those that hardened up or perhaps as they decayed some of the uh, butyl or whatever these are made out of had migrated into the screw thread. So I got brave and I put a screwdriver to them and leaned on them much harder than I wanted to but I just held it in position for a while and then they cracked free and now all of these are turning. I had to go through this process on all six screws. This set, by the way, has uh, two IF amplifiers in it. Let me zoom back here. We've got our FM RF amp, FM converter, and then the AFC. But when we come out of the converter, we go through this IF transformer into this IF amplifier, into this IF transformer, and down here into this IF amplifier. There's two stages of IF amplification as well as an RF amp. And then into either this AM, standard AM transformer, or the primary of the ratio detector, which is basically another IF transformer of a kind. And you tune the primary for max signal and then you tune this for minimum voltage across the discriminator slash ratio detector. And uh, Dave Tipton just did one of these. I'm going to use that same process. Uh, but now we have one, two, three, four, five, and six slugs moving. We should be able to go ahead and do the alignment. These trimmer caps seldom if ever give you any trouble other than being a little scratchy sometimes but these are isolated so these shouldn't be a problem and then we will attempt to uh, decode <laughs> all of these RF alignments um, the FM string this is done with trimmer caps you have your tuning cap you have a trimmer cap your tuning cap, a trimmer cap, tuning cap, trimmer cap, and it's got all of these aligned in the same frequency um, so that the, you know, as you tune, the main tuning cap is synchronized between the three. <clears throat> and then we'll come down, and these are all permeability tuned on the AM and short wave bands. And reading the description of this thing, it appears. And, and I've never seen a setup quite like this before. We've got our FM antenna coming in here, our FM dipole, going into our FM RF amplifier through this transformer. This is the one with the leads that had gotten ripped off on the terminal strip. But they've taken the sec center tap of this and they're feeding it down to this switch. So your FM dipole ends up being your short wave antenna for the four short wave bands. Uh, the AM antenna is a separate antenna here, excuse me, for the three short wave bands. This is your AM loop antenna that you saw. So that this is selected for AM and goes into the RF amp for the AM, the converter for the AM, and then the common IF chain. They use 455 for the, I think it's 455, I'll have to look at the paperwork. It's either 455 or 456 for the IF on the AM and they use 10.7, your common 10.7 megahertz for the FM section and that's selected through these band switches here 
and these are a horror show to figure out because this one they're showing turning clockwise this one they're showing turning counterclockwise this one appears to have a segment missing like it goes open at some point as does the one that's down here but these switches are so buried inside of here and they're just not visible you'd have to rip this whole thing apart to verify you just there's no access to them I can get access enough to spray a little bit of uh, deoxid in there but you can't really see what's going on <clears throat> so we got our fingers crossed there's no problem with any of the switching on here it's a real horror show to try to follow again you're going clockwise and counterclockwise and nothing is labeled and I'm looking at this and I'm making the assumption the assumption that it's showing it on the FM band so it'd be FM, AM, and then one, two, three short wave bands. But again, that's not the way a schematic shows it switching into the AM band right after the FM band. So I, yeah, I guess that's the way it'd work. It's almost impossible to decipher. I printed out four copies of the schematic thinking that I would take and draw the connections on the different switches, but. I decided not to drive myself into early senility. Uh, we'll just go with doing the alignments. Now that we have the cores of the IF transformers broken free, the information that I have on this very poorly reproduced document here it says to inject 10.7 megahertz to the first grid of the FM mixer. Now I can see it. It's down in this hole down in here. But I am just getting, touching it right there. It's that far down in. They warn you, do not disturb any of the components in there or you're going to affect the FM tracking. That was factory preset. I do not have any test probes that will reach in there. There is just no way at present I can get in there. I have just ordered a set of those 6 inch long or so test probes that you push on the end and the little hook opens on. With one of those I could reach down in there and get on that pin, but nothing I have presently will reach down in there. I've tried. There's no access from the back. There is an opening back there, but there's no way to get around all the wiring without disturbing it to get to that pin. So for now I've got the signal going into the antenna jacks. Not the right way to do it but I can hear it in the speaker and I'm going to see if I can peak the 10.7. And my mailman just showed up. I think he needs a signature. I'll be back. Okay, he had a package for me, I've taken care of that. Now until I get those probes and the real SAMs for a true alignment, I'm just going to do this quickly by ear and see if I can improve the FM reception on this set. The AM's working pretty well. This is my first IF, second IF, third IF, this one here is the ratio detector. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, that one's pretty broad tuning. Maybe brought it up a little. Let's try this one. That's kind of peaked. That one was pretty much peaked. Pretty much peaked. And we didn't get much of any, if anything, out of that one. 
Now, this one is our ratio detector. Let me get on an FM station. Let me disconnect the signal generator. Oop, don't rip that wire off. You just barely got it soldered back on there. Those little wires are six thousandths of an inch in diameter. Okay, let's see here if we can get a reasonably strong station. You can hear it's pretty distorted. Now, that does not appear to be doing much of anything, if anything. Let's go all the way to this end and see what happens. Well, that's the end of travel that way. But his attempts to reverse his 2020 election loss and encourage a 2021 that was way out. I'm way down the other end of that slug now. That was sticking out about a quarter of an inch, and now it's in almost three eighths of an inch. But that's a huge improvement. Other January 6 defendants in the past. Part of what resulted in the 45 page oh, yeah. former Vice President Mike Pence's contemporaneous about his coverage. That's weak, but clear. Down here in the basement, below ground level, and in a valley, I don't get a lot of FM stations on the best of radios. Presidential Trump characterizes as a witch hunt, the former president remains the front runner. But that's a massive, the is massive to join improvement. Other countries in pulling some of its citizens out of Niger in the wake of the military coup. Here's NPR's Michelle Kellerman. Some US Let's try going back to one of the weaker Niger. stations and play with the IF some more. That's real weak. Got a lot of flutter on it. That distortion you hear is just because of the weak signal. There we go. That's a very, very weak signal. Yeah, HOM's a long ways away from me. Not much there. Uh, 
That one I couldn't get him in for. have more resources when it comes to college admissions. You know from there? I know I'm the last guy anybody think by ever be talking like this. But I can see my future. All right, until I get my test clips in, I think we've got a good starting point now. That's a huge, huge improvement on EFM. This slug is was way off and this one was way way off okay once again we're at the half hour mark and I realize these first three videos have been lacking in meat and potatoes but there's just been a lot going on and I apologize I hope you stick around for part four I am going to touch on some subjects I think or hope you'll find helpful, interesting, informative. We've got some things to cover on the schematics I've discovered. We'll be attempting to do a proper alignment on this set and there's probably another, at least another 30 minutes of content. I don't want to extend this one out to an hour. Uh, it's going to take me probably at least a half an hour to finish up on the electronics or the you know the, the electrical repair on this thing and then I will move on to the cabinet now there'll probably be a fairly long delay before I get the cabinet ones up because there's something in between I want to throw up here which I hope you'll find a little bit interesting and the time is rapidly approaching for me to head back to Thailand. It's two and a half months I'm going to be gone again. And it sounds like a long time, but it's whizzing by. Uh, I'm not getting half the stunt stuff done that I want to get done before I leave. I have to buckle down. Uh, I want to take my heating plant apart, clean it, my oil burner apart clean it so it'll be ready for the winter be unattended for the rest of the winter so the house doesn't freeze while I'm gone I've got good neighbors they keep an eye on the house I got you know a cop across the street who's always got an eye out on the place for me and I'm, I'm very fortunate that you know the house will be watched but uh, I will be gone and the plane tickets purchased and I'm not missing the flight uh, I've got to get back to Thailand at any rate, I hope you'll tune in for part four of this anyway. And hopefully I'll get another video out on a, a little mystery package that came in the other day. That's it for now. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Thanks for uh, traveling along with me. And we'll catch you on the next one. Uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.